All right, let's move on to a real application problem. Uh, what is this? 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 What is that? What are those things called? Air compressors. Some of you may own one, may live in a house where a parent owned one, may work in a shop or a facility that owns one. Some of you may never seen one, but that's very few. Most of us have a lot of experience with air compressors. Okay, so why does water collect in the tank of the air compressor? What do you mean water collect in a tank? First time I bought an air compressor, I was you know, young and didn't really know. You get the instructions and you read through instructions, safety instructions on this air compressor, pancake type. That's like one I have in my garage. And in there, they say something about, okay, risk of explosion and all this other stuff. But uh, what does this say? Drain tank daily or after use. First of all, I don't drain it daily, but I don't even drain it after every use. But I'm supposed to drain it, obviously, very frequently. Internal rust causes tank failure and explosion. So, well, I'm scared. But... Uh, what is this down here, eight? Drain valve. How many people have opened up the drain valve and watched what spews out? Nice, clean, deionized water, put a little cup there and take a drink? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, that rust colored stains the concrete when it spills out right there. Yep. So that's good. So now you understand. So this is an important part of the lecture. I'm happy to have this part of the lecture because this is where Thermo 2 meets the road. This is where it can explain things that you've observed in your life. Right? All right. So the water collects. Oh, by the way, if you ever go by the machine shop in the back out in the West Campus, there's a big air compressor. It kicks on every now and then. But every now and then, it'll go through a blowdown. So the machinist doesn't have to go out there and manually do it like on your home and turn the valve and open it. It will just, psh. anybody been out there when it blows down? Yeah, it's kind of psh, loud and it frightens you at first. What's going on over there? Failure. You know, go, go tell them to fix it. No, it's, it's a part of the feature, safety feature. All right. So how do we understand this problem? How can we explain that there is water that gets into the tank. Where did the water come from? Out of the air. The humid air that's in your garage that gets ingested into the air compressor, gets all the pressure boosts up, then it gets deposited into a tank, sits there, mellows out, cools off, back to room temperature, and then when it's in that cooling off to room temperature, it condenses out, and there's liquid in the bottom of that tank then. So, it's a little complicated to understand this because we have first an open system analysis of the compressor followed by a closed system analysis of like sitting it in the tank and let it sit there and cool off for a while before we pull it out and use it in our air guns and other stuff. All right, so we consider the air in three states. Outside the compressor, here's my compressor. So let's say we have 75 degree F air. Let's say we have relative humidity of 50%. Okay. Uh, we can actually get the humidity ratio for the air on those conditions. My memory says 0 0.008, but now I need to borrow a, an appendix from one of you because I forgot to bring mine. Looking on page 1031 on figures and charts, it's in English units, 75 degrees F. I come up to about 50% relative humidity. And then I read across, and it looks like, yeah, it's about right, about 0 0.008, so my memory's good. So that's how many pounds of water vapor per pound of dry air that gets ingested into the compressor. The compressor boosts the pressure. What is the pressure of the air in the room before it gets ingested into the compressor, roughly? 14.7, we round off to 15 PSI absolute. What is the pressure after the compressor? What's the pressure coming out of the compressor in your home uh, or shop 
compressor, air compressor system? 120. 120, okay. So the pressure is 120. Is that PSIG or PSIA? PSIG. Gauge, it's gauge. Okay, somebody says, I want to know what it is in PSIA. Add 15. Add 14.7, or let's round it off to 15, so it comes out 135. So forget this number. It's 135 PSI A. Now, there's a little pipe usually that comes out of the compressor. On mine, it's copper. I can easily touch it if I want to, and then it dumps it into the tank. Do I want to reach in there and touch that copper pipe after it's been running for a while? Anybody have experience with this? Does it come out hot? Does it come out really, really, really hot? It comes out really, really hot. Do you know you're equipped with the tools, analysis tools in this class to predict that temperature at which it comes out of the compressor? Can you do that for me or is that too hard? No, it's not too hard. You can do it. How would you do it? You'd assume the best compressor on the market, if it has some irreversibilities, it'll come out hotter. But we're going to have a low estimate of the temperature of it coming out. So it would be isentropic compression. Going from this pressure to that pressure, coming in at 75, if I want to convert that to absolute, I add 460 to get it into Rankine, not Kelvin. Rankine is the other absolute temperature scale. So what is the temperature at the exit? Won't it be the temperature at the inlet times the pressure exit divided by pressure inlet to the K minus 1 over K? Isn't that nice when you see an old friend? Isn't this your old friend? Right? Is this the right equation? Yeah, we can estimate. Anyway, I'm not going to continue the process, but you can get that estimate. That's an open system analysis around the compressor. But what do we do is we dump it into a tank, storage tank. And think about it, you run it, you store it, maybe you don't use it till the next day or a couple hours, and so it has time to cool off. So now you think about a closed system undergoing a process from initial state one where it's really toasty hot to final state two back to room temperature. But what's the pressure? High, it's way up there at 135 PSI A, right? Okay, what would be the humidity ratio at state one between the compressor and the tank? Did you add or remove any water vapor? Did you change the delicate balance between water vapor and the dry air? No, you just ran it through the compressor. This is 0 0.008. But somebody says, when I dump it into the tank, I let it sit, liquid water collects at the bottom. Okay, what does that mean about the air on the top of that liquid water on the bottom? Is it dry air, moist air, or saturated air? Saturated air. And so now the question is, is what is the humidity at state 3? Let's call this state 2. What's the humidity at state 3 at the end of the cooling when it... It's 75 degrees F again, 75 degrees F for the temperature at 3, and the pressure at 3 is 135 PSIA. What is, what is the omega-3? What would that be if it was, if it was um, saturated air? Can you make that calc? How would we make that calc? Well, it would be 0 0.622 times... PV divided by P minus PV. What exactly is PV? Aha, uh -huh. because it's 100% relative humidity, it's saturated air, it's P sat at 75. So luckily, I still am borrowing your table. Make sure I return it. I, uh, sometimes I end up with student stuff in my office and then it's hard to get it back to the student. So we're gonna go to the steam table in degrees F, this will be table A2E on page 975. And I look down, 
They don't give me 75 degrees F, great. They give me 76, so I'm not going to do the interpolation. Oh, fine. Here, 0 0.43. There, uh, close enough. That's PSI. A. Right? So that's if it's saturated air. So guess what omega-3 is? 0.622, 0.43. 135 minus 0.43. If you have a calculator, I'm going to run it myself. We'll... Good. Do you agree? Anybody else get 0 0.002? It's 0 0.008 kilograms of vapor per kilogram of dry air. But after it's cooled off, only 0 0.002 are still in the gaseous state or still in the vapor state. What happened to the 0 0.006 liquid? Of the vapor that was ingested, what percent condensed? Isn't that 75%? 25% is still remaining? That's a lot of the water vapor. Now, we picked conditions here that aren't that dramatic. Let's say you're in Houston, it's 95F and it's 60 or 70 percent humidity you're gonna have a bigger problem you're gonna get a lot more water in your tank air compressor tanks let's say you're in el paso no not that much right so it depends on how much humidity is in the in the uh, air that you're ingesting into the system 